and I'm your moderator for today. I'm from our sales and marketing team here at SIM. And hold on just a second, we're getting up and running here. Um, that is me and Fred at our most recent Halloween party. And here is a link uh, if you'd like to meet Fred. I'll get that to you in just a second. Um, some quick housekeeping items. Um, we'll be presenting about 15 minutes of content today with some time for Q&A at the end. All attendees will be in listen-only mode. Please use the question tab if you'd like to communicate with the presenter during the webinar. And we invite you to tweet during the webinar, hashtag SimWebinar. A little info about SIM partners. Velocity is our SaaS solution local CMS that increases local, mobile, and social visibility at a local level. Our social platform is a social CRM that promotes fan engagement at a local level. Now let me introduce our presenter, Neil Mahoney. Neil is our SVP of Growth and Insight here at SIM Partners. Neil. Thanks, Andy. Hello, everybody. My name is Neil. I'll be walking you through some of our tips for mobile and local geotargeting today. Um, I look forward to hearing some good questions at the end. And uh, as Andy mentioned, you can either message um, us questions as they come, or at the end, we'll be taking those as well. I'll go ahead and get started. So a little bit of what we'll be covering today, mostly mobile and local related geotargeting tips. Uh, it's a pretty broad topic. We do only have 15 minutes, so for the sake of time, I'm going to focus on Google rather than any other paid uh, pay-per-click platforms. Uh, Google represents a large percent of all traffic, and it's a good place to start. So what is geotargeting? What are the major types of geotargeting, local and mobile? And is there a difference? And then we're going to get to the tips uh, for mobile or local and hopefully give you guys some good takeaways. So what is geotargeting? Uh, the actual geotargeting that we're speaking about today is done within the Google AdWords tool. Uh, it's on the settings tab for campaigns that you create and basically allows you to choose locations where your ads will appear. It lets you focus your ads in areas where you know or you think you'll find the right customers and it lets you restrict your ads in areas where you might not be finding those customers. And, and the whole goal here is to increase your ROI and geotargeting is really essential if you want to make the most or the best use of a limited budget, which we, we all have. So rather than targeting the entire US, uh, at least for local marketing, which might not make sense, you can really drill down into state to city and even further, which we'll get to. The highest level of geotargeting is by country. This does not make sense for somebody who is not a national brand um, an online retailer, anybody who's looking to sell something down the street or in the, the state, uh, state next door does not want to be targeting an entire country. So to get a little bit more granular, we can target within states, within cities. You see here we've got Illinois, we've got Chicago, and to go even further, you can tar uh, target specific zip codes. Again, all of these settings are adjusted within your AdWords interface within the settings tab for specific campaigns. And this level of targeting is, is better served for, for local marketing, marketing. So a business that serves a local neighborhood or offers specials uh, to selected locations or sells unique products in selected regions or cities or, or products that might vary by regions or cities. To take it a step further, Something else that's very useful, you can implement geotargeting by radius. So in, in my screenshots here, you see I've set a radius targeting of two miles around the city of, um, I'm sorry, two miles around a certain zip code within Chicago. Uh, 60601 is a zip code downtown. I'm targeting two miles around that zip. My second screenshot is a little bit more broad, so 10 miles around what is identified as the Chicago City Center. And this is, this is really good for businesses that know that the traffic they want to target is within a very specific 
distance from their location, maybe walking distance or driving distance, depending on, on your business. So mobile, local, is there a difference? It's a question we get all the time, and the answer is more and more these days, not really. Most mobile searches are, in fact, local or interested in local results. Some of these statistics are pretty impressive and incredible when you read them. Approximately 40% of mobile searches have local intent. That's a lot. About 30% of smartphone users search specifically for contact information, phone numbers, and maps and directions. So a huge chunk of smartphone users are looking for very, very specific information, and it's important that you provide that information to these, to these users, to these searchers. 60% of mobile consumers expect businesses that show up in search results be within walking distance or local driving distance. So if you are trying to target local customers, mobile is definitely a medium that you want to, um, to be leveraging. And we'll get in a little bit more uh, in a few slides about tips related to mobile specifically and how you can leverage that to target your, your local customers. This is another really compelling graphic. It, this is from a recent uh, research study. And it shows that mobile searches are further down the funnel than uh, PC users. 38% of mobile users and 36% of tablet searchers report being either in the middle, which is the red section, or at the end of the funnel, which is the yellow section, versus just 14%, which are on PC and laptop. And this is really why local search marketers are finding so much appeal with mobile marketing. Uh, you, you can think about how you might use mobile in your own local shopping process, and generally they're, they're smaller screens, tiny keyboards, s slower page load times, and you probably aren't going to your phone to do window shopping as often as you would when you were at home or on your computer. Okay, so to our first tip, this is a look at the dimensions tab which within Google AdWords. And what we're seeing here is a campaign that is targeted nationally. So we, we are targeting the entire US, but we are leveraging the dimensions tab to identify user locations. So even though we are targeting the entire US, there are certain things we can do leveraging the dimension tab to identify where within the US our quali most qualified traffic is coming from. So in the, in the screenshot in the upper left, you can see the primary metric to focus on here is cost per conversion. Atlanta, Miami, and Chicago have really strong, really low cost per conversions. New York has a much higher cost per conversion. That's pretty telling to me as a search marketer that I need to address the traffic from New York, either reduce that cost per conversion or exclude New York altogether. Um, the flip side of that would be, can I drive more traffic from Atlanta, Miami, and Chicago since they have such solid cost per conversions? And the answer is yes, there are things you can do to either increase or decrease traffic from certain geo areas um, for, for your paid search campaigns. And then the screenshot on the right shows how I'm leveraging location bid modifiers. I've adjusted bid modifiers for Miami, Atlanta, and Chicago up by 20 25%, and I've decreased my bids in New York by 30%. What this means is that for anybody who is doing a search in Miami, Atlanta, and Chicago, I'm willing to pay another 25% on top of my original bid to make sure that they see my ad and that I show up higher in the results because they convert so well for me. And the exact opposite is true for New York. That traffic from that area is not performing well for me. I don't want to pay as much. I don't want as much traffic from New York. So I'm lowering my bid modifier. Very useful tool. The user locations uh, gives you insight into where quality traffic is coming from. And the bid modifiers let you adjust how you're targeting them. The next tip is related to geo-modified or location-specific ad copy. Here on this screenshot, I've given you an example. This is a very general, broad search term. Um, but the first ad you can see here is what we'd call a non-local ad. There's no localization to this ad. There's no, even though it's a general term, we know where these people are coming from based on where the targeting for this campaign is set up. And you can see in the second ad, even though it was a general search hearing, 
we've got a local ad. The city or the geo is included in the headline, and it's always preferable when possible to modify your headline to include a geo. There's lots of studies and data out there that show that when you do have a localized ad copy, your click-through rates are higher. Um, one note on that, you want to, when possible, ensure that the landing page that you send traffic to um, from a localized ad is also reflected on the landing page. You want to keep your, your messaging consistent. The third piece here that we've highlighted is what is called a location extension. So this isn't necessarily geotargeting, but it does help you qualify your traffic um, in that you can sit, set, let's say, a Chicago setting for targeting, but show a very specific address in your location extension and qualify any clicks that might come through as a result. Location extensions, along with some of the other Google extensions, have seen anywhere from 6 to 8% increase in click-through rate. This is a great example of what I mentioned earlier, making sure that any reference to location in your ad copy is followed through on the landing page. And here you can see a location page that has very quality and uh, specific location information. We've got an address. We've got city name in both the, uh, the map area and the, the content of the, uh, of the landing page. Again, this, this helps reassure a user that they've clicked through on the right ad, that the, you, you are, in fact, giving them what they're looking for, and ultimately helps increase conversion. The last tip on mobile, um, and this is a big one, or one of the biggest tips for mobile, is to, when possible, always have an optimized mobile experience. Uh, you, to do this, you have several options. You can either have a, a responsive design website, which really adjusts uh, the, the resolution of your site depending on the size of the screen that a user might be on, so whether it's a desktop, tablet, or a smartphone, or you can have a dedicated, uh, excuse me, a dedicated landing page optimized for, for mobile traffic. And the reason that this is important is really obvious when you look at these statistics. So 48% of consumers say they feel frustrated and annoyed when using a site that's not mobile friendly. 52% of consumers said that a bad mobile experience made them less likely to engage with the brand or the company. And 36% say they feel like they've wasted their time with this site and that, that with sites that are not mobile friendly. 48% said that a company with a poor mobile experience did not care about their business. Another good mobile and local tip is what is called click to call. Google allows you or provides you with a free call tracking number uh, that you can append to your ads. It's called a click to call extension. You can see here some of the settings within um, within click to call you can choose to have Google forwarding number. This lets you see how many calls came through this number. And if you don't have call tracking on your end, it's a great free way to get that insight. You can select to only show the phone number or allow people to call as opposed to click through. If you don't have a mobile optimized uh, experience post click, this is a good option for you. You can serve ads on mobile devices, but people can only call your location. And you can set a custom duration uh, number here, 60 seconds is the example, for Google to count that as a conversion as, as opposed to somebody who calls and the duration is only five seconds. The last mobile tip that I've got is a uh, similar to the location bid modifier, which we touched on a bit earlier. This is a mobile bid modifier. And very similar reason you'd want to implement this, you can see here on this screenshot, when we look at cost per conversion for computers versus mobile, the mobile cost per conversion for this campaign is much, much lower. Uh, I want to do everything I can to drive more and more mobile and local clicks um, uh, if for this particular campaign. The way you do that is you increase your mobile bid adjustment. I've done it at 40% here. What this means is that I'm willing to pay 40% more than my standard cost per click for mobile users, hopefully driving more, more clicks and more conversions uh, at that much lower cost per conversion that you can see in the cost per conversion column. So we did a pretty good job. We stayed on time there. I'll hand it off to Andy, and um, we can we can see what kind of questions have come through. All right. So we have a couple questions here. We're going to dig into uh, the rest of them. If we don't get back to you, um, 
prior to uh, the end of the webinar, then we will be following up with you via email. So uh, first question here that I think is a, a good place to start. Um, we want to know if uh, you can remove areas from within uh, certain location targeting. So for example, a particular city within a state. Yep, so absolutely. Same way that we were targeting cities specifically, you can exclude cities. So within the AdWords interface under um, settings and location, you can, let's use the example of Illinois, you can target Illinois and you can then select Chicago and tell Google to exclude Chicago. Uh, this will prevent your ads from serving within Chicago even though you're targeting Illinois. Um, the other way you can go about this is what we just looked at with the location bid modifier. And in, in that example, I believe it was New York that was performing poorly for us, and we can set a negative, a very high negative bid modifier percent, which will greatly reduce your bid for searches coming from a particular area. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we also, let's see, um, with regard to responsive design, do you recommend going that route or uh, focusing on a mobile optimized landing page instead? So that, that definitely depends. Um, if you have a very specific mobile focus, um, if you have unique messaging, calls to action, or you want to handle that traffic completely differently than you would desktop, then you would probably want to go the route of mobile, dedicated mobile optimized landing pages. If, if you have a, a website and you, you place value on mobile traffic, but you're not going to create a mobile specific initiative or campaign, uh, responsive design is a, is a great option. Okay. Great. I think that's about all the time we have today. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you for attending. And um, we would like to uh, let you know that a live recording will be made available to you within 24 hours. Um, also, you can find more resources on our resource site at our resource center. Here's the link for that. Thank you for attending. Have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you on a future STEM Partners webinar.